It was early November 2013. We had just completed the Baja Ha Ha rally to Cabo San Lucas, and now we were ready to explore the Sea of Cortez. The sea is a vast wilderness full of moonscapes and turquoise seas with little anchorages with funky names like Los Frailes, the Friars, and Ensenada de los Muertos, the Cove of the Dead. I managed to catch a tuna, well, actually a little skipjack, red and bloody and not particularly good to eat. But if you catch it, you have to eat it. In Puerto Bayandra, we stayed several days resting at anchor and enjoying the full moon with a bottle of red wine. We roamed the streets of La Paz looking for fresh produce and discovered a market where the local organic farmers sell fresh lettuce, basil, cilantro, and a cafe with real cappuccino. Then we hired a panga to take us around the island sanctuaries near La Paz. We had a wonderful day exploring the sea caves of Espiritu Santo and Isla Partida, snorkeling the reefs and swimming with sea lions. Espiritu Santo means spirits of the saints and Isla Partida means the lost island. We rode a southerly wind up to San Evaristo, a tiny fishing village about 60 miles north of La Paz on a crescent of sand surrounded by tall mountains. Now there isn't much going on in San Evaristo, just a small store and a few shacks for the local fishermen, but what a beautiful protected anchorage. We watched five days pass by like scudding clouds on the horizon. Near the islands of San Francisco and San Jose is a rocky cluster called Los Coyotes. People have lived on this rock for a thousand years. It's a place more isolated than a monastery. Soon it was time to head back to La Paz to make a few minor repairs, revisit the cappuccino shop, of course, and make our way south. Everyone down here talks about making the crossing, that is, sailing across the Sea of Cortez to mainland Mexico. We spent a day and a night at sea and fetched up an old mazalot with its colonial buildings and small tree-lined streets. What an oral feast as you make your way into the old town, with classical piano, jazz, trumpet, an operatic soprano around each corner. These are classically trained music students, cloistered in their studios, practicing their craft, while the art studios of old Mazalan beckon. Before long, we were in Puerto Vallarta, beautiful Banderas Bay, and the boys came for a visit during their college break. It was great seeing them again. We had Christmas dinner at Puna de Mita, then we explore the Islas Tres Marietas, a marine sanctuary, climbing on rocks and snorkeling along the reefs. In the late 1960s, Jacques Cousteau led an international outcry to prevent the Mexican government from bombing these uninhabited islands. Pam and the boys gave me a GoPro video recorder for Christmas. The boys rigged it to their kayak. Woo, we made it to the cave. Yeah. yeah, now back to the boat. The boys threw pretzels over the side of the boat, made underwater movies of hundreds of pretzel-eating fish. Wow, that's a lot of fish. That looks really cool. How was it? All right, I hope the video is good. We spent a few days sailing around the bay, watching the whales go by. And enjoying the fabulous sunsets of Mexico. To quicken the pace, we rode a speedboat to the other side of Banderas Bay, boarded a 4x4 truck, and bounced up a mountain road. At the top of the mountain, we climbed into safety harnesses, put on crash helmets, then trundled up a mountain path on the back of a burrow and jumped off a platform on the most awesome zip line ever. This adventure included a rappel down a 125 foot waterfall. 
The highlight of the zip line was going upside down. I remember looking at Pam with her arms dangling up in the air, the background a blur of green, and thinking, what have we gotten into now? A few days later, we were in Oaxaca. We toured the old city and the Oaxacan countryside in the pursuit of mole negra and artisan tapestries. Julian managed to find a local climbing wall. Pretty soon we had the whole family climbing the walls. A couple of miles outside of the city of Oaxaca lie the ruins of Monte Alban, one of the most impressive ancient sites in Mexico. The Zapotecs ruled from this extensive site high above the modern city, first occupied around 500 BC. They leveled off the top of the mountain and built palaces and temples. Their hieroglyphs indicate that they were the first people in Mexico to use writing and a calendar. Then sometime between 700 and 950 AD, the city was abandoned. While Julian's passion is climbing, Lindsay loves hiking high into the mountains. So we hired a local guide and went for a six mile trek from the tiny village of Benito Juarez to the high altitude town of Coyamaloyas. In the mountain town, we found a friendly old man out walking his goats. He seemed to be intent on showing us his village. People put corn up on their roofs to dry, and then make corn tortillas, which we had for lunch cooked on a wood stove. We hired a car, and we drove six hours over the mountains to the seaside village of Puerto Escondido where we rented motorcycles and sped along the town's dirt roads. Look out! Oh well, it's a good thing those roads are made out of dirt and not asphalt. The village of San Agustillo was our favorite. We rented a bungalow on the beach, laid around in hammocks and watched the magnificent sunsets. Back in Banderas Bay, we sailed over to the village of Yalapa. There are no roads and no cars, just donkey paths. The trail from the village leads across a river past ancient trees into a beautiful waterfall. Back on the boat, life resumed its familiar, slow pace. Before we knew it, it was time for the boys to head back to college. How long will it be before we all meet as a family once again? I'll sail 3,000 miles across the South Pacific before I see my boys again. I'm going to miss them a lot out there. I'm going to really miss them.